So Malcolm is a builder of fintech and mobile payment systems working towards digital integrated financial services for all. His talk, Mobile Money 2.0, is about mainstream financial services. Uh, yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Malcolm Castillo, all the way from Uganda, Kampala. So anyone been to East Africa? Also, I'm Uganda, Kenya, or Kenya? Well, you need to come to Uganda. So the conversation is around mobile money. So have any of you interacted or used mobile money in Africa, in East Africa? It's a foreign concept. So basically, mobile money is uh, simply a bank account in the palms of your hand. So when I say the palm of your hand, I mean any mobile device could be basic, uh, featured, uh, all GSM enabled, or even a smartphone. So it runs on USSD. So the idea is that you can digitally put money onto your mobile phone, stroke bank account, and then you can uh, transact and then use it for whatever you want and also cash it out through a network of agents. So the agents ideally stand in like if you had your ordinary bank account with branches where you'd go, put in money, remove your money. So mobile money is just, again, having an account on your, on your phone. So uh, that, that's the small history of uh, mobile money. So mobile money uh, was first launched in East Asia and also the Pacific in 2001, uh, but it was M-Pesa that's uh, in Kenya that made it popular when it was launched in 2007. Uh, and then the model was just replicated along East Africa. So mobile money came to Uganda in 2009, uh, Rwanda in 2010, and then also in Tanzania in 2008. Uh, so again, the idea was simple, using your basic phone to access financial services. Uh, for this case, the, 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 the most obvious uh, application or user case was uh, a predominantly peer-to-peer -peer transaction, that is sending money between the users on the same network, and also for cash-in and cash-out services. Uh, because if you notice, uh, East Africa or Uganda in general is a bit vast, so someone in Kampala could send uh, someone at home in the village money and they could easily access it. And then with time, of course, it was about also in payments. That's mainly buying airtime and data. Uh, that's how it began. Then eventually, as time progressed also, uh, bill payments was added on to one of the user cases. Yes, uh, so bill payments came on to you know, the, the menus. And then, uh, of course, starting with the obvious power, water, TV, taxes, among others. And then merchants also finally came on to the payment as well, mainly for collections. So you had so many SMEs, so many shops uh, being able to make payments to them. And then, of course, uh, disbursement uh, disbus uh, of payments, that's bulk payments, became also a very good feature that was added. And, also, uh, and yes, disbursement of payments. And then the present, we currently use it for remittance payments, that is cross-border mainly, both inflows and outflows. And then you have integrated uh, financial services. So uh, through your phone, you can now access uh, loans, you can do savings, the investments, and also you can uh, buy insurance products. And then we have interoperability. So we have uh, mainly three big uh, uh, service providers in Uganda, MTN, Airtel, and UTL. So it's very easy. The, the cost of sending money in between the different networks is also close to the same. Uh, so inter interoperability is becoming a big thing as well. And then we are now embracing open API, whereby any business or anyone that's interested in playing with the features of, uh, of, the, of the mobile money service providers, as long as you have your application ready, you can just integrate at an API level. So they are, it's, a, it's a standard that's across all the different players. Uh, uh, here was more of uh, where we are gro globally. So we have about uh, 1.6 million people who are registered on mobile money. Uh, they are doing, uh, as of 2022, they did 1.62 trillion US dollars. And on daily, it was about uh, 3.45 billion transacted on a daily. So of course, uh, and the growth is about 12, rather 13%. And it's also, it's also interesting to note that when you look at money remittance, uh, currently, if you look at the way things are, uh, the, uh, the transaction fee is about 10 to 15%, uh, but it's coming down to about 3.7 using mobile money. So there's, it's basically making life easier and also for less mileage as well. So for those who like infographs, this is something that uh, probably will give you an idea of, sorry, let me just rush through it. Yeah, so this is just a high level of uh, the pretty numbers. Uh, for those who have access to this, we'll see this later. So I'm just going to rush through them. Uh, the sources, of course, the G uh, GSM uh, report for 2022. And these are the different user cases that I spoke to earlier in terms of what it's being used for. 
And uh, when we come down and drill down to Sub-Saharan Africa, uh, these are the numbers that we are looking at. Still, uh, I mainly talk about East Africa because it's where I stay, it's what I know. But also this should give you an, uh, an overview of what's happening in the other regions. So uh, the case study, of course, I'll talk about Uganda. That is MTN Mobile Money. So in 2022, we have over 17.2 billion as of uh, 2022. And then uh, Mobile Money subscribers grew to about 11 million. So of that, they transacted over 92.3 trillion. That's about 24, million, 24 billion US dollars. So the footnote here is our brothers in Kenya where they have about 30 million active users that have transacted, all transacted uh, 236 billion US dollars in 2022. So that number is a lot bigger than ours. Uh, so the factors that have accelerated the growth of mobile money, we look at regulations. For Uganda, when they banned the use of scratch cards, so that meant all it implied that everyone had to buy airtime and data through mobile money. Uh, the irony is that in Kenya, people still buy scratch cards and in Tanzania. So it's only Uganda and Rwanda that have that banned scratch cards. And then you have uh, mobile money has also become a main payment uh, channel, stream for all government payments. So paying taxes, paying for water, all other government uh, services, you have to use mobile money besides the bank, since no one likes going to the bank. And also we, the, the agents themselves have been untethered. Originally, you'd have an agent specifically for MTN, specifically for Airtel, but any agent can uh, be a channel of all the different uh, networks. And then you also have the, the mobile phone penetration in Africa. It's one of the highest in the world. Uh, I, I think you have about 736 million users in Africa who have uh, mobile money wallets. That means ideally they also have mobile money phones. So this, uh, this uh, phone, uh, penetration keeps on growing now that we have smartphones as well. And also, one thing that also helped us, uh, you know, uh, accelerate this was the pa COVID pandemic, whereby everyone was forced to stay home. So the only way that you could pay for things was through, was online. So mobile money became very prominent after that. Uh, so we also have to look at the regulation. The regulation landscape has also changed a lot. What began in, 2000, uh, in 2009 in Uganda, uh, the regulator had no idea what it was about. So they just saw a bunch of users growing every day, every day, and the numbers becoming interesting, and they did not know how to handle this. So most of them, uh, of course, decided that, hey, we need to regulate this because the numbers are becoming too much, and the, man of, the money that they are handling is also way too much. So the, the government came up with re new regulations, yeah, that one. You needed a payment license, uh, at least for Uganda. And then you also needed to, again, partner with the bank to handle the money part of it. And uh, because of this, uh, it can also change the landscape. So most of the mobile money operators, by then there were MNOs, that is a mobile network operators, had to now split and then create a different entity that would handle mobile money as an entity alone so for easy management. And then they would be under the su supervision of the central bank. So that was the main difference that also came in. So that streamlined operations. And when that was done, of course, now it, uh, things like introduction of taxes, uh, powering uh, government payments also came into play. So regulation in, in regulations in Africa is of course by country, but many of them follow the same uh, script as well. Then the future of mobile money, where we are going. Uh, can it go any further? Of course, yes. Uh, so one, we're going to see that we're going to have untethered customers where you're not tied to uh, a SIM card or a specific network in terms of sending and receiving money. So probably things like vultures will also come into play. As long as uh, someone has sent you money, all you go show that this is the vulture, and then you'll get the money. Also, if you're sending, as long as you know someone's number, you'll be able to get the money. Then international operability is coming in where we support uh, cards like MasterCard, Visa, of course, blockchain, and also this is where ILP will also fall in the grand scheme of things. And also supporting multi-currency as well the US dollar, euro. For now, if anyone is to send money from abroad to Uganda, you'll get it in, 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 in UGX. And also if you're sending out, they'll get it in the, the respective currency. But I see as the trends go, it, it will be possible to get in a specific currency going forward. And then also customer retention and reality is becoming a big thing. And so how do we tap into this to make sure that customers probably stay on the network, on a given network for long? And then you have also automated payments. This is where direct debits come into play as well. And then embedded services or basically creating an ecosystem so that the money never leaves, never has to leave you know, the, that mobile money entity. 
Uh, most of them are being in the form of if you buy a phone, we'll be giving you free data for six months, or you'll be able to qualify for this kind of service. So again, how do we build these embedded services? So plugging uh, ILP into mobile money, uh, anyone who is looking at doing business in, in, in Africa, mobile money cannot be ignored. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, it cannot be ignored. It's a very big necessity. And also, basically, what ILP will bring to the table in terms of powering mobile money. One, of course, there's mo uh, web monetization. Uh, there's a preparation of the gig economy in Africa. So you'll find that many of our people are going onto the internet, either as influencers, all content creators, and so on and so forth. So for these small monies that they collect, how can they be able to cash out in, Af cash in, in Africa? So this is also where there has to be an integration, a delivery integration with mobile money so that they can easily get this money at the end of the day. Small payments, uh, $10, $5, the same thing. How do I easily get it without having to pay a very big amount in terms of transaction charges? And then also supporting multi-currency, like I said. Can I receive the money as it was sent to me in USD, in dollar, in pound, or in whatever it is? Then, of course, uh, the cheaper of moving money. Is it cost-effective in moving money? and also access to international financial markets. Can I buy stocks in a different country? Uh, can, I be, can I be able to buy insurance from a cheaper provider outside of Uganda? So those are the different things that we see. The world becomes a small global stage. And then also broadening and widening uh, you know, digital, digital financial services. So uh, the business case uh, for those in the room, you have over 781 million Africans who have who are registered to mobile money. And remember, they are transacting over 3.48 billion US dollars a day. So how do we tap into this? How does ILP tap into this opportunity? And vice versa, how do we also expose the mobile money users to this opportunity of, uh, of ILP? Thank you very much. Uh, for those who want to quote me, please uh, take, <laughs> feel free to take a picture. Hopefully, I'll see myself in the papers one day. <laughs> Thank you.